Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Kulecha and I welcome you to this channel. Today I am sharing my learning from the uh, Middle Discourses 6. Uh, the link to the discourse is given in the description. You can uh, yourself also read the discourse. Basically, this discourse is towards the monastics. The, uh, sang, the uh, people who have left their home and have joined the Buddha's Sangha and it is directed towards them. So, Buddha in this discourse is basically trying to say is that if a monastic is asking, if he is wishing for one, two, three, four, five things, then he should do this. Right? So, Buddha is trying to say that if you wish this, then you will have to do this. Right? You don't get anything without making an effort. So, this is basically pointing towards the uh, one of the noble eightfold paths which is right effort. That Buddha says that you have to exert the right effort to get the result. See, in Buddha's path, we are all towards freeing ourselves from suffering, right? That's the end goal, achieving Nibbana, right? So, for doing that, right, we have to take certain effort. So, here Buddha is saying that, uh, Buddha is like, first the Buddha is saying is, mendicants live by the ethical precepts and monastic code, live restrained in the monastic code, conducting yourselves well and seeking arms in suitable places, seeing danger in the slightest fault, Keep rules that you have undertaken. So here Buddha is talking about the very very much important importance of rules. So in the monastic order there are rules for even the smallest of things. Right. So and then there are things that you should when you go to arms beg for arms you should not go to places where it can be perceived that you know you are going to wrong places. Right. Uh, like brothels. And, you know you should not go towards those places. Right. You should only go to the safe places. Right? So, important Buddha is talking about the conduct, the precepts, the morality. Right? Then Buddha says is that <coughs> Buddha talks about very very many wishes that a mendicant can have. Right? And then Buddha talks about what the person has to do. So, Buddha says the mendicant might wish, may I be liked and approved by my spiritual companions, respected and admired. Right? Or there is some other wish that oh, Buddha says, the mendicant may have a wish that may I prevail over desire and discontent and may desire and discontent not prevail over me. Then there is another may, may wish that may come in the mendicant's mind. May I get the four absorptions, blissful meditations in the present life. So many, many uh, such wishes that Buddha has uh, uh, elucidated in this particular uh, sutta. So I will not be covering that because then the, sutta, the video will be very long. But the essence is that Buddha is trying to say, if you have all these kind of wishes, then what you need to do? So, Buddha is saying basically four things, five things. Buddha is saying first, let them fulfill the precepts, right? So, that is very clear that observe the precepts, whatever I have given you, observe the, the precepts. That's the first. Second, contribute to the inner serenity of the heart, that means meditation, right? Contribute to the inner serenity of the heart. Third, not, not neglect absorption. That means more and more concentration, absorption, similar to meditation only. Fourth, endowed with discernment. Endow discernment means what is permanent, what is not permanent, right? Which is like vipassana, having the right view. And frequent empty huts. That means for a mendicant, it is uh, empty huts, which is basically solitude, right? Because only in a solitude you can meditate well. So, what Buddha is trying to say is that you can have all these wishes, right? That I will be free of greed, hatred, delusion. I may be free. I achieve Nibbana, right? All these wishes you may have. But for doing that, so Buddha is very curt in terms of saying that you have to do, make this right effort. That is, fulfill the precepts, commit to the inner serenity of the heart, not neglect absorption, endow with dis yourself with discernment and frequent empty hearts. Right? So, these are the five things that Buddha expects basically from the mendicants if they want to achieve their wishes. Now, what is like the uh, lesson here for us lay people? See, what I can draw the lesson here is that the one is the precepts. The five precepts, uh, uh, no killing, no lying, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, no drinking. This we have to ensure in our daily life. Even if friends, we ensure these precepts, it's five precepts we will make a very, very big progress in our life. And friends, one more thing I will say is that what I have read from the Buddha's discourses, 
you know, some of the other discourse that I have already shared is Buddha says that you know how uh, the discourse uh, about how to stop, how to uh, let go of past negative karma. Buddha says giving up is very very important. So if you decide today that I will not kill living beings, I will not speak impure way, right? And you come in the five precepts. Even if we make a mistake, that's fine. But if your intention is strong, that intention matters a lot. So first thing as lay people is we should have follow our precepts. Second is contribute, meditate, right? Meditate. So uh, the meditation, the, the earliest meditation as taught by the Buddha was the Vipassana meditation, inside meditation. Right? I've made a, <coughs> a full playlist on inside meditation is available, right? Um, maybe I will do a course also on inside meditation, right? Uh, if I find time. So practice inside meditation. Vipassana meditation is like it's it's amazing, right? Very very gentle way of purifying your mind, right? So do some research on inside meditation, right? And start practicing inside meditation. Third, not neglect absorption. That's fine. End with dis dis discernment. That means I have always look. You know, there is this always we do not look in the right way. We are like, we are, when we look at something, we have our thoughts and concepts and ideas which cloud our uh, seeing. So we have to view things with discernment. That means remove the labels, which is Vipassana, right? Looking things in the right way as they are, right? And we will find that they are all impermanent, all changing. So what's the point in getting attached to anything when everything is changing? All my attachments only are creating my suffering. Right? My attachment to views, my attachment to you know objects, my attachment to people. That is all my suffering that I have created for myself in all my lives. So why more suffering I create? Right? Now it's time to end the suffering. Right? End the attachment. And frequent empty huts. So frequent empty huts, I will just say. So we don't live in huts now, now that you know we don't live in huts. What I will just say, whenever we find time, right? There was something that I read in the book Mindfulness in Plain English. Uh, uh, it's all about the cushion manners, right? The cushion manners that we can, we time that we spend in our cushion doing vipassana meditation, right? So as we find time, try to withdraw a bit more from your life, right? If you are too much into socializing and everything, try to withdraw, withdraw, withdraw. Too much into TV, right? So I love TV, I I love movies and everything. But slowly I've started tried, started withdrawing myself from all these things, and as I get the opportunity, I close the door, like uh, fortunately I have uh, multiple rooms in my house. So I like, I, this is my room, I just close my room and I uh, start med my meditation, right? So friends, we are all very lucky to, you know, have the right conditions for our growth, right conditions for medita meditation and, and, and the very fact, and maybe even if, if you are watching the video till now, right, we are, that we are in the Dhamma, right? Nothing better can be there for us to just devote ourselves fully into the into the Dhamma. So uh, these are five points. Uh, do please you also go through the discourse and you'll get your own insights. And uh, I hope this video was useful. Do share your thoughts, learnings, reflections in the comment section. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.